My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon, specifically the Darkest Rhapsody Estate thereof. We need to talk about mistakes for a second. Running into someone who's moving the opposite direction to you in the hallway and you both move left and then you both move right, that's, that's a mistake. That's a harmless mistake. Responding to you as well when someone says happy birthday, that's a little bit of a bigger mistake. Accidentally recording multiple times to a full hard drive resulting in corrupted footage that is entirely unusable that happened to also include the second mission of Darkest Dungeon, the end game of this series. That's a pretty catastrophic mistake. And I made that one. And I, yeah, um, it sucked. And I, I didn't really enjoy that day uh, afterwards because I was like, oh, great. It's like, mm, you know, about 50 hours invested into a series and I accidentally lost the file for one of the final missions. There's no way to recover it at all, even slightly. I, I spent the rest of that day looking. So Vavasaur, Ver, Hendry, and Dervil happened to make it through Darkest Dungeon 2. Uh, I'll pull up the quest log. Vavasaur, Ver, Hendry, and Dervil returned from the darkness and lit the way forward. Now, the second mission of Darkest Dungeon is probably the hardest of the three missions of uh, the Darkest Dungeon area. Um, number three is basically, do you know the correct path? Y slash N. If Y, go to win. Um, and Darkest Dungeon 4 is a joke. It is effectively just the end game. It's so you can see the end game stuff. So the hardest mission of the Darkest Dungeon, I uh, lost the file for. And I'm extremely saddened by it because it was a really, really, really tense episode. Uh, there were a lot of ups and a lot of downs. Uh, Vavasaur hit death's door a bunch of times and had a couple of death triggers, but thankfully Vavasaur is Vavasaur, so they are a flagellant. They have higher uh, death blow resist compared to any other character. They've got 5% more. Well, 6%, but whatever. Um, it rounds up in the game, so it's 72.5. But uh, yeah, they, they have more death, ro uh, death resist. But on top of that, they'd been using Suffer a lot, so they had the plus 10% death blow resist from that as well. So they, they were doing really, really well. Um, all of them had pretty negative effects, like we got Cove Scrounger instead of Rune Scrounger. Actually, this one was quite good. Uh, Clotter on Vare got replaced with Quick Reflexes, which is actually quite nice, because Vare was acting pretty slow in a lot of those fights. Now, for anyone that is looking to this series as a way to realize how to play Darkest Dungeon, um, obviously, I can only only teach my own playstyle, but Darkest Dungeon 2 has a bunch of enemies, specifically the kind of mini boss enemies of the area, uh, that are Templars. They have the Templar Impaler and the Templar Warlord. And there's three different areas that you need to go to to light different sconces, and each of them has a mini boss fight in it. So there's a good pathing through the map. You can find that if you look at the maps for DB2. Um, you can also not look at that and just recognize that if it looks like you're going into a dead end, I know because there's no scouting in that area, but if it looks like you're going into a dead end uh, because of the symmetri uh, symmetrical nature of the map, then get ready for a boss fight. And against the Impalers, they have a move called Revelation, and you have three Torches of the Flame that you get from DD1 that are negative 100% stress taken from Revelation, negative 100% damage taken from Revelation. If someone gets hit with Revelation and they don't have one of those trinkets, it is really bad for them. Extraordinarily bad for them. We're talking like, you know, 60 points of stress, like 40 points of damage. I think it was actually 30, 30, maybe 30, 40, 30, 50. I can't remember um, because, you know, we have different characters with different resistances. So, you know, it wasn't always the same and there's damage ranges as well. But basically the idea was I got there. Uh, I wanted them to be fast enough to use Guard Dog to protect the person who didn't have a Talisman of the Flame on them. Talisman of the Flame being the trinket that protects you against Revelation. So I had Hendry not hold a Talisman of the Flame and Ver just constantly protected them. And then Hendry was using the Harvest so that I could target the Templar, Impaler or Warlord as well as some of the adds in the fight. And that was really, 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 really powerful, especially because we have Hot to Trot for the extra crit on the first round. So we were critting like a madman. 
Uh, Devil was just there to heal everyone back up, obviously. And Vavasaur was there because Vavasaur can stand in the front line and tank a ridiculous amount of damage from them and then heal himself back up off of Exsanguinate. So basically, we weren't dealing with Vavasaur's health, so Devil was just there to keep Vare and Hendry alive, and Vare was there to keep Hendry alive. It all worked out in the end. It, it was really high tension, but it was also like we ended the fight with pretty much all, everyone on full HP and most of them low stress. So we did it pretty well, but I'm still really sad that we lost that file. Uh, in response to losing that file and, you know, several others recently because of recording to full hard drive. I went through my recording hard drive and I've deleted a bunch of old series that were on there. Um, they were old series that I eventually intended to go back and do like a kind of edited short clip reel of, uh, but I eventually found series that are old enough that I don't feel comfortable putting them back up on the channel. So I freed up a bunch of space. This problem shouldn't happen again. I'm sorry that it has happened. I guarantee, as disappointed as you are not to see Darkest Dungeon Mission 2, I was much, much, much more disappointed to have uh, lost the file. Anyway, that's my diatribe on mistakes. Now it's time to get into the episode. Uh, and I also haven't even planned a party yet, so whew, it's going to be a while before we get out there. Uh, Unequip resort. These are the talismans of flame, by the way. You get three of them. All right, so Vavasaur, Ver, Hendry, and Durbel have all, uh, all made their way through. So they are, again, uh, going to be affected by the Never Again buff. You can see by the little icon directly next to their name and level, which means they no longer contribute to the largest size of our uh, stagecoach, I guess. So let's go over here and see if there's any new heroes we want to recruit. A quick draw Flagellant's actually quite good. Flagellants by base are really, really fast. They are also have the ability to hasten themselves up with Lash's Kiss in any resting area. Uh, if they ever use Endure, they buff themselves as well for the... Not for the rest of the fight. I think that's just for a round or two. I can't remember though. Um, but yeah, they're, it's really good to have them be fast. Especially on the first round. Um, if that was quick reflexes rather than quick draw, I'd probably take the pennant right now, but it's not. So what we've got to do is start looking at our lower level characters. Uh, we also picked up a bunch of lower level characters. I don't know if this was in the last episode, so I'll have a quick look at them. We've got Turnville, who's an early riser with a quick draw. Uh, so that's the plus two speed as well as the plus four speed. And they're just going to be a stress healer for our low level dungeons. We don't have any healer healer for our low level dungeons. So a lot of the time it looks like we're going to be running like Kaunta as a self heal, Penel as lockdown, Bovin. Um, as uh, heal other characters as well as DPS and lockdown, and then Tonville as the stress healer. We'll be able to do that a total of once before Kaunta levels out of this area, and then we'll probably replace them with Genon, uh, run the exact same crew, and then after that, Bovin will probably level out of that area, and by that time, we'll be able to start making reasonable parties with midliners. Everyone savvy? Cool. And we also have Breakville. Same antiquarian I've had forever. Uh, Raritan, you're a fair weather fighter, Daredevil. Daredevil's actually not bad on a man at arms. I wouldn't lock it in, but I wouldn't lock it out. Uh, Dipsomania, Enlightened. Dipsomania is annoying in uh, in the courtyard. It's annoying in um. It's annoying in the Warrens. It's very limited, actually, as to how annoying it is. It's the second man at arms. We actually do need more man at, uh, men at arms. I can just throw them away later if I don't want them, so it's fine. The raw strength of youth may be spent, but his eyes hold the secrets of a hundred campaigns. There's not enough things that I feel like I need a grave rubber for to get a second. I think Plaque Holder is actually doing excellently fine right now. Uh, weapon Tinker. No. Don't really need a low level leper. Uh, quick draw fragile. Cool. So we've seen all of them except for Mordir, uh, precise strike and manslayer. I mean, that makes you a beast with incision, but still, that's not great. Um, yeah, we've got Paris and Bovan. We'll, we'll be fine without Mordir. Uh, and then Trelli is thin blooded, a flagellant with nymphomania. Yeah, none of that really means anything. So it's basically like a blank abomination. 
and I just picked up another frontliner in Brereton, so I don't desperately need another one of these. Cool. I don't need one enough to take a low level one like that. That's what I mean. All right. Uh, in that same mission, by the way, we got either the Signet Ring or the Ancestor's Pen. Whichever one we didn't already have, we got from the Darkest Dungeon Mission 2. Uh, we also do need... Uh, uh, Neil. Uh, now need to sell the Ancestor's Bottle so that if we do take on a Shambler, we get a benefit from it because we got the Ancestor's Bottle from the Shuffling Horror at the end of Darkest Dungeon 1. We can now actually make a relatively good low-level party. Like, as I was just mentioning beforehand, exactly how that party would go. Uh, okay, let's have a quick look at our low-level missions. Bumper Crop is a little annoying. So Bumper Crop would give me the ability to just have a ridiculous amount of provisions for Darkest Dungeon after that. Do I have a party all ready to take out the Darkest Dungeon mission? Four. Evelyn's not necessarily locked into the final combat. There's a little bit of displacement in this uh, this darkest dungeon. DD3. So balance could actually be handy. Evelyn's quick draw is... Eh. She's already got on guard, so she's usually acting ahead of them anyway in turn one. Uh, she does have the worries, so we would remove that from her in between weeks. So let's think about it, right? Like, my party for DD3, I need a lot of damage that can hit the back line. So, Bele has the ability to pierce and hit the back line, which is really, really, really good. Um, but then also has the ability to turn around and start dealing a ridiculous amount of damage to the front line with the Adder's Kiss. So, I feel like Bele is probably part of the party. Uh, I've got to save uh, Reno and Dismas for the final, final combat. Because I want Reno and Dismas to be my final two fighting the heart of the world. Uh, the dungeon, because they give you four camps, right? They give you four rest. But the dungeon is only, it, you only need those four if you go into the dungeon and don't know where you're going. But unbeknownst to you, because it reveals the map slowly, the whole map is just a giant circle and you need to go to the center. So that's what we would be doing. Since it's exhausting, we'll have a lot of provisions to buy. So I think we actually do do the bumper crop mission first. And that just sets us up for the Darkest Dungeon mission, which is probably done with, I believe... Uh, it's going to be Bele... Oh, wow. Hang on. No, I couldn't actually take any of the higher level ones. Oh, never mind. We do have Monville. Right. I was worried that we didn't have uh, two vessels left because I want a vessel in both of the final missions. You don't desperately need one in literally the final mission. Uh, again, it, the, it's 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 a very forgiving mission. Uh, like, I could probably run it with Mortimer Dismas. In fact, I might go like Reno, Dismas, Mortimer, and a healer. Just so that we're just... Gah, 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 just constantly destroying them with these uh, reposts. That's going to be good fun. But yeah, I have enough healers. Cool. So it's probably next mission. Bel Air for the backline. So placeholder uh, also has the ability to hit the backline for you know, just real potent amount. Um, so those are probably like both in the party as heavy damage dealers. And then I need a stunner in a second line. That's probably Ben now. I would take Renault if I could, but I can't. So I'll take Ben now. Um, then the problem becomes, do I want a healer or a stress healer? Because I basically left myself with the choice of the two. Healer. Like, definitely healer. Like, literally no one in that party actually even has a self-heal. Yeah, so it's a healer as well. Evelyn has the worries, but I'm not taking her soon. Burgette has calm, but that doesn't really matter. Monville has unquiet mind, dud hitter, deviant. Cool. None of those things actually matter. Now, are we more likely to be stunned in DD3 or DD4? We're more likely to be stunned in DD3. So that means that Monville's going on DD3 because they have Hard Noggin for the extra 15% stun resist. And Burgette is actually going on the mission directly after to DD4. 
And after DD4, we'll have won the game. But after that, all of the restrictions are lifted. So the death counter and the weak counter and all of those kinds of things, they're lifted. So the general idea for the rest of the series after that, oh my god, 15 minutes and I still haven't done anything. Look, there, there, there's a lot to talk about, you have to admit. Um, I'm going to complete all of the quest goals. So that means the Gibbering Prophet, Brigand, all of the rest of the bosses. Uh, repelling the Brigand incursion is going to probably occur while I'm doing that. So we'll repel the Valf Brigand encounter. Uh, we'll do, obviously, the two final Darkest Dungeon missions. Uh, there's more that we still have to do in the uh, Miller area. And I do want to try and build some of the uh, some of the districts that come from that area as well. So the Sleeper, I have to imagine, is related to the farmstead and then there's exploring the courtyard to kill the baron the viscount and the countess now for roster goals i'm very unlikely to end up with you know like a arbalist on level six um yeah that's probably the only one i'm not going to end up on level six so i might at some point decide to power level an arbalist just to finish the roster goals but i'm definitely going to be finishing in this series all of the different quest goals so you know one mission, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So if we do all of them in one shots, it's at least seventeen more episodes. So consider it's probably going to be about 25, 30 more episodes in the series. Okay, savvy. Let's uh, take the party that we already predicted out onto the Warrens, so that we can get bumper crop before we go into the provisions in the next area. Um, it's going to be exactly the party that I dictated before. Both of these are stunners in the front line, and then we even have Bavon as a stunner as well. Um, Tonville goes there. Now, uh, Bavon is actually going to have a little bit of difficulty in this area. Bavon is level 2, but level 2 means you can upgrade your abilities to level 3, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you're going to have, what, 120% blight chance? It's a little bit of a problem. Because they have 60% resist down here. So 120 plus the, what, plus 20 that you get from Blasphemous. It's not enough. Do I have another Blighting Trinket I could actually just give you? No, because I sell all of my low-tier Blighting Trinkets. It's a shame. I actually do. Never mind. I have the Hag's Ladle. Plus 30% Blight Skill Chance. Negative, uh, sorry, plus 40% to Blight Resist and Disease Resist. The Disease Resist actually is relevant in this area. I'm going to give you the Hag's Ladle. Uh, unfortunately, that does mean someone else has to carry the Ancestors map. Uh, we'll probably put that on Tomville. Now, Tomville, you need to guarantee your bleeds and your low level, so you actually do need your bloody die as well. Unfortunately, that means your accuracy is off as well. Ugh. Maybe you don't hold the map. Someone else has to hold the map, because you're going to need a focus ring. This one's too obvious. It's it's focus ring plus cudgel weight. This is rampart shield plus focus ring. The negative eight dodge is actually kind of significant. It seems like it's not, but it actually is. So if I had a better option on any of them, I'd probably go for it, but I don't think I do. This will guarantee your blights, but... It's more important that I have scouting. All right, level them up for the area, and then let's go, let's go, let's go. 20 minutes before we go into the mission. Again, I am sorry about that. Uh, there was, however, a very large amount to talk about. Or rather, a very large amount about which we needed to talk. Damn it. Cool, and then counter. For, nope, don't care about any of those. Pinel. Are you going to be bellowing in this area? Are you going to be reposting in this area? Are you going to be defending in this area? You're actually more likely to be defending because we have two fragile characters in the back line, one of whom relies on dodge and doesn't have much and doesn't have a self-heal. So you're probably more likely to defend, which means we'll go with that layout. All right, let's go out on the mission. Actually, no, there was something I wanted to do before I went out on the mission. Yeah, uh, Paralyzer's Crest. 
plus 20% to stun skill chance, negative two dodge. Now, it's basically like a slightly better cudgel weight because negative two dodge rather than negative one speed is a lot. Uh, but it's worth noting that the cudgel weight applies to a stun that is already 10% higher in base chance than the Paralyzer's Crest. This used to be plus 40% to stun skill chance. I think they could have nerfed it to plus 30 and still been fine. Um, I still want to take it though, because we're desperate for stunning trinkets. We have been for a very long time. Yeah. Actually, we've got 65 scouting here. Does someone have... Yeah, we have a Warren's Explorer and a Warren's Scrounger. We might be able to get away without the answer. No. No, no, I was too close to talking myself into that. We're not doing that. Uh, we'll take all of the food. I know that you get more food in this area, but again, we're going to need to use it occasionally to heal our people. Uh, for that same reason, we're actually going to take uh, four bandages where usually we would take none to this area. Uh, I don't have any light turning on or off abilities, so we'll take an extra two of those. And is there anything in this area that I'm specifically going to want to purify? Yeah, a couple things. All right, that's us done. Let's go. <sighs> All right. Even the fiercest beast will lay down when it is not eaten. Steal their food. I would have really liked it if I could have brought a antiquarian out on this mission. Would have very much appreciated that. Oh well. Curio. That's a quest location, so I can just dig my head in there. Okay, we can go all these curios on the way around. Unfortunately, no, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, I, I poke my head out in this direction, loot that curio, then dack back in. I get to party. However good party is, however good party is, whew, however good the party is, we're not going to want to do that until the very end of the dungeon because I'm thinking gold, we rest, get all of the camping buffs, and then go in. Um, actually, in blood. how many camping buffs do we even have? We've got Tiger's Eye. Like battle buffs. Oh, instruction and uh, weapons practice is pretty good. Actually, I would prefer weapons practice and uh, tactics. But, all right. Never mind. We do have some reasonable party buffs. Nice. Perfectionist is pretty damn bad. We need to get rid of that immediately. Cool, cool. So this is going to be a double stun on the back line from Bovin. It's more important that I kill the Swine Drummer in time because that's the stress across the party. Stress across the party is more difficult to deal with and I can stun the front two liners as well. Yeah. That's just me quickly running it through my head. And oh my god, Kornza! You have the, long, uh, the wrong abilities tapped in. That's, uh, that's kind of tragic. Obliterated. Uh oh. Stunning that cultist brawler actually saves us two turns from it, so it's too efficient not to do. Unfortunately, now I need this blight to hit. Actually, no, 40% resist. Okay, we're fine for this area. Good. Yeah, there's the drums of doom. Hopefully, it doesn't hit stress on everyone. It does. Okay. And for the old gods, doesn't crit. Good. Slice it off. Impressive. Not bad. Backliner is now dead. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Which is good because the order of which those acted, the backliner was going to actually be able to get a good shot. Ouch. This is the bad thing when our stunner is just not fast enough. And that's one of the things that you run into constantly with a man at arms. You really, really, really need them leveled up before they have any reasonable speed. 
Shouldn't have done that. I just cost myself a turn of recovery. I could have just let him bleed for a while. The slow death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Hmm. Get rid of the anti-venom for the Sapha and the journal page for the census. Probably not going to keep the census, but it's fine. Going across this way, like I actually have enough shovels, so it's not a problem. Um, but going across this way allows me more lenience in how I decide to come back to this area. So I think I'll go with that. Such blockages are unsurprising. These tunnels predate even the earliest settlers. Am I taking money or am I taking heirlooms now? I think I'm taking heirlooms. Got a lot of districts left to build. Not missing out on that much money right now. Thank you for helping me free up some space. All right. Now, unfortunately, the bleed resist on the carrying eaters is actually slightly higher, so I don't want to risk not hitting that. Yeah! Good one. That's really, really, really powerful. Fine. Fine. I just get a bunch of carrion eaters. A death by inches. <sighs> no, we can take care of them other ways. We do need to start waking that stress down as well. They're extremely resistant to Blight, by the way, so... That's basically just being used as damage. Oh, it actually works. Nice. Um, should actually be able to stun you. Nice. Uh, probably not going to bleed, but it's fine. It was just meant to make it easier for someone else to take that enemy down. Uh, yeah, rather than kill that for the possible stress heal on myself, especially because it would only stress heal one, I'll take the opportunity to get a little bit of healing. It's more important to take every opportunity that you get to heal when you heal for such a small amount. Didn't get the scouting this time, so we're at the whim of traps right now. Don't have a sun ring. Don't have anyone in my party who's a warrior of light, do I? I do have an early riser. Okay, so I do need to turn the torch back on. Pretty important to split the damage there. Just because this swine slasher has the... Nice. Has the ridiculous protection. Now that swine wretch is dead next turn. Now the swine slasher is dead next turn as well. Didn't even hit. Woo! My goal here is just to hit the swine slasher with my own attack now. Actually, I kind of want to slow everyone down. Yeah. So we're going to bellow to slow everyone down, which is effectively like a pseudo stun if you intend on killing them in the same turn anyway. I need a second person to be able to hit the back line. Beautiful. And then I just need someone who can hit. You read my mind, video game. You read my mind. Now, this is why Bellow. Like, I'm just going to defend. 
This is why Bello is so good. All right, that was bad. I thought it. I thought it had lethal poison or uh, le lethal DOT. Continually onslaught. Let's imagine that what I was actually doing was cheating out another self heal turn, because that's definitely what I was doing. I was not wrong. Me mistakes. I doesn't ever make mistakes. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Cool. cool. Mm. Bunch of curio down there. Curio, curio. Quest location, quest location. So as soon as I get to there, especially because the secret door is super nearby, I basically have to em empty my inventory. Okay. So that means I'm probably resting there, which means that I hope that there's not a hallway fight. Uh, there would have to be three hallway fights here for it to be a problem. Yeah, so I rest here after this combat, which means that I actually don't pump the light until then. Woo! Both of the backliners are now dead. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Mm -hmm. Damn it. I was hoping I would get the action first. Yeah, that's exactly what I was worried about. Uh, I think Bovan has the ability to remove a curse from someone right now. No, you only have self-medicate. Damn it. I need uh, leeches so that I can remove a disease from a target. Unfortunately, Grey Rod is really bad. Negative 10 accuracy, negative 10 damage. That's probably... Another one yeah, falls. it's not hyperbolic to say that that has single-handedly killed the possibility Their that I go and fight the Shambler. Broken. Maintain the offensive. Is it? We could use the dog treats, and the dog treats are a lot of accuracy. We don't have enough healing for it, I think. I'm coming back anyway, so I may as well walk to the end of the hallway and then come back. With 26, that means that I actually want to loot the furthest one. Oh, no, this one's fine. Cool. Oh, the bones. Eh. Resurrection call is not great. We don't want anyone to interfere with that for the possibility of getting necromania. I think you can get necromania from that. Whatever, there's a negative that you get from it that I don't want. If only treasure could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. Yeah. Here's where you have to start making annoying decisions. I actually don't need the rest of these torches, so I can pump the torture punch. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Cool. Uh, that madman needs to go down instantly. Ooh, double stun the back line. Their dodge is actually a little bit annoying, though. All right, we're fine. Yeah. Let's take the swine slasher out of things as well. Madman for six damage plus bleed. It's not great. Especially not getting the debuff that round as well because I wanted to stun. Damn it. Decisive pummeling. Not a bad crit there. Good timing on it as well. 140 versus 60. I can actually just double stun these again. It was possible. Unfortunately, yeah, the accuracy is 75% on that hit. Eh, hit it though. Bled him too. Alright, so the madman gets exactly one action in this combat. I'm really hoping that we get the Aria box after we kill him. So there's three things that you can get from killing the Madman. You can get the Aria box, you can get the Crescendo box, and you can get the Overture box. Um, I can't remember whether it's Crescendo or, uh, Crescendo or Overture that gives you extra speed. But I know the Aria box is like negative 25% stress just by itself. And that, a lot of the time, that would be the best option available. 
I couldn't hit the front line of there anyway. So. Ouch. Especially with that bleed on you right now, I definitely want to get the yeah, battle for medicine on you. Heals for four because it also negated the two. Good crit. Yeah. Both of you are dead. I'm gonna yell at you so that we can try and make them act super late next round so that we can get more recovery actions out. A little bit of a self heal on the. On the hound dog would be nice. A little bit more healing on the jester as well. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just don't see the future where we can go for that. Shambler. Hey, we got the over to your box. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. <laughs> it's actually the worst of the boxes as well. <laughs> Plus 15 max HP, plus 8 dodge, negative 2 accuracy. So I guess if you want someone desperately to live, but it doesn't matter if they hit anything, it's fine. <laughs> uh, all right, so we should rest here. Oh. A spark without kindling is a goal without hope. So we can get nighttime ambush prevention from Hound's Watch. Probably should as well. And then it's just weapons practice instruction. Here we go. Why have I still been running you with the wrong inventory the entire time? Blackjack needs to be on you. Gosh. Plus 10 accuracy and plus 3 speed. Oh, that might offset it by enough. In Radiance, may we find victory. Maybe. I know these two hallways aren't scattered. So that's that's a trap. Think that. yeah. Speaking of that's a trap. There's one. I'm going to ply you with a bunch of food before we go into this room because I don't want, you know, targets just stunning you and then crit locking you or something like that. Crit locking, like that's a real word. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go for the battle buffs here because the Jester wouldn't be uh, particularly powerful in this combat. Skill and purpose. I forgot to change your abilities again. At this rate, the carrying eater gets to act once. So I basically have to decide, am I okay with it acting once and want to attack someone else instead? I do. Damn it. The they wanted to munch. Body and brain. Squad. I want to munch. Uh, it's probably time to blight them up. Hey, actually managed to hit that one. Decimated. We're down. Okay. We act before the carrying eater. Exposed to a killing blow. Good. I can totally see myself just hitting it. All right, now the Swine Drummer is basically within everyone's ranges. Self-stress heal, definitely there. Doesn't even move the bar. How terrifyingly sad. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Mm -hmm. Overconfidence is a slow and an insidious killer, self, by the way, just in case you'd forgotten since... Last that was mentioned. I do need a single key for the secret door, so I've got to keep the keys. I don't think I need the shovels. If there is a trap in that hallway, I can just move the other way around. So I can throw the shovels now. Uh, do you need the dog? 
I want the holy water. Swap this onto the Jester. Then the Jester has a ridiculous amount of disarm chance. And they'll use that for some stress healing. Actually, probably should have moved slightly forward to check what this Curio is. Just in case it's scrolls. It's not scrolls. It would be lootable by us, but it's not scrolls. The only thing I cared about there was scrolls. Just in case you're unaware. Despite how often I keep saying scrolls. Saying scrolls all the time, like, um, obsessed with Mojang's second failed game. Damn it! We failed the... Curious okay. is the trap maker's art. His efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. Actually, I could probably leave the Overtier box on you. We have basically all of our scouting done. After we enter this room. Okay, so I no longer need the over to your, uh, the scouting, so over to your box. My jester would probably stress out is the thing. And I'd be fighting it for what, 7,500? Because I'd get the ancestor's bottle back and then I'd sell it. is a lot though. And I have the ability immediately after to retreat if I desperately need to. Okay. I think we crave the void. It's going to be a little annoying to rectify my party positioning. No one has a sun ring, so you should all be pretty accurate still. Probably going to be battle buffing a lot in the combat. Okay. Kind of want repost. Don't repost more than defender. I want it more than stun. No. Lost at all. This infernal black. Oh, woo! The, the swapping their positions there doesn't actually significantly affect me. It does a little bit. I'm going to swap them. Because if I can get a stun off on them on the first round, that is insane. So both of my stunners need to be standing in the... I forgot again! Oh my gosh. I deserve to win this fight. Yeah, and then... You have zero speed, but you went faster than my minions, so yeah, that, that makes sense. Strike. Thump! Didn't even kill the sycophant. Yikes. Um, yeah, it's pretty important that I just kill the sycophant. Preventing it from taking an action is, is pretty big. Back to the pit. Goes down. Rit bleed. Nice. Very nice. Roll the stun. It's 40% chance to stun. It's not even that much less damage than my normal attack, so... Yeah, with you, it's probably worth rolling. Obdurus advancement. Nice! Almost full party dodged it. That claw. It's unfortunate they're so fast. Hopefully I go next. Damn it. Okay. Both of them got their clapper claws off. That's pretty bad for me. That bleed only hits for one, though, is the problem there. All right, I'm going to stun the sick up into the back line because this gives uh, Bovon the ability to blight it while I'm also blighting the Shambler. Otherwise, Turnbill was going to be hitting it with Harvest rather than Slice Off. So. The same thing was happening two different ways regardless. Okay. 18 damage. Stranorius Lament. 
Now, you don't actually get to summon any friends, and both of your friends are dead in two rounds. You just don't know it yet. So you don't even get to summon any friends this round. That's really, really powerful. That's why DOTs in this combat are insane. Probably should have used the dog treats there. Rit! If I can get a stun here, it's going to be so good. Damn it. Enemy's dead. We just need to take care of ourselves now. See what I mean? I think taking care of myself is actually just killing you instantly. Is it? I can just take recovery actions. <laughs> you've got only 6 HP and you've got a 6 DOT bleed on, uh, glide on you. So despite the fact that there's 8 DOT on a different character, that different character is more prepared to deal with the results. Couldn't even hit a stun when it doesn't even matter. It could be dismissed as a fever dream, if not for the corpses. I do need to go back to the secret door. I don't need light to do that. So, by torches, uh, we have... Unless we get a combat while backtracking through this hallway, we have no hallway combats. So, we don't technically need the dog treats, but we also don't need the bandages for the same reason. So, we get to take that, that... No need for medicinal herbs, no need for holy water because we've already seen all of the things we're going to be walking back past. We do need the key, though. Rather than going into the room and then walking backwards, I'm just going to straight up walk backwards. I'm going to face God and walk backwards into hell. And that's so that a hallway for, uh, fight can't spawn. I'll poke my head out to check that curio because I don't believe I've done that so far because I literally could not have. Look at the map. Hey, I'm really glad I didn't throw away the rest of my food. Yikes. If I get a hunger occurrence on the first space of the next hallway, I'm going to be so annoyed. You have no clue. Didn't get it, kid. Light's completely out. Loot this with key. Got him. All right, that was a pretty damn good mission, if I do Our say so myself. Replenished. The soldiers will feast tonight. Necromania and Daredevil. Yeah, neither of those are important. After we clear the DD mission three, everyone here will be de-stressed as a result. So it's totally fine by me. You did end up with Necromania, despite the fact that I specifically didn't interact with the oh, bones. From those few surrounding farms as yet untouched by the spreading calamity. Well, for the moment, my name has been Rhapsody, the name of the game. It's been Darkest Dungeon. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.